Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, you'll be learning how to answer nursing questions in regards to anxiety disorders. If you haven't done so already, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Press that red notification bell so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. Without any further ado, guys, let's get started. First question. A nursing instructor is teaching about specific phobias. Which student statement should indicate to the instructor that learning has occurred? A, these clients recognize that their fear is excessive and seek treatment to promote change. B, these clients have a panic level of fear that's overwhelming and unreasonable. C, these clients experience symptoms that mirror a CVA, that's a stroke. Or D, these clients experience the symptoms of tachycardia, dysphagia, and diaphoresis. And I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. If you're new to my channel, just press the pause button. Whenever you're ready, we'll resume. All right, guys, so the correct answer is B. These clients have a panic level of fear that is overwhelming and unreasonably and unreason unreasonable. All right, guys, so, <coughs> excuse me, phobias. There are two things that have to be with the phobias. Number one, that fear that they have, it has to be unreasonable. So if the person is afraid of a tiger, well, that's not really a phobia because guess what? A tiger can eat you, right? The person will actually be in real danger. So a phobia is when the person has an, a fear, but the fear is unreasonable. That's number one. And number two, and if you look at the answer, the second part of it, it says panic level. Panic. You know what that word mean? panic means? That means that the fear is to such a high a level that the patient can no longer think clearly. They can't think logically. Whenever a patient is in the state of panic, you can't give them directions. You can't tell them, okay, slow down your breathing. Turn to the left. Turn to the right. Do this. Do that. No, they cannot follow directions because once they've reached that level, which is panic, their logical thinking, their reason, their reasoning has gone out the window. Okay. So, uh, B is the correct answer. Panic and unreasonable fear. All right. Choice two. A client has a history of excessive fear of water. What is the term that a nurse should use to describe the specific phobia and what is the subtype of the specific phobia? A, aquaphobia, natural environment type of phobia. B, aquaphobia, situational type of phobia. C, acrophobia, natural environment type of phobia. Or D, acrophobia, situational type of phobia. Now guys, as a student, you should have gotten rid of C and D. Okay, because C and D are both talking about acrophobia. And what are those? That's fear of heights. Okay, so you should have gotten rid of C and D automatically. You should have been between A and B, both aquaphobia, which is fear of water, right? And it says in the question that the patient has excessive fear of water. So it has to be A or B. So you just um, um, increase your chances of getting the answer correct by 50%, right? Now, between A and B, A says aquaphobia, natural environment type, and B says aquaphobia, situational. What is the difference? Environmental type is the type of things that you would see naturally in the environment. So this patient has a fear of going to the beach because what do we naturally find at the beach? The sea, water, versus choice B, which would have been situational type, and that would be... Um, uh, something that's not, um, natural, something man-made such as a water park. Okay. So the correct answer is a, your aquaphobia, natural environment type. This is something that naturally we see in the environment, such as that patient going to the beach. All right, guys. Um, just to give you some examples of the other two choice C, which is acrophobia. That's the fear of heights. Natural environment would be going on a mountaintop, right? That's not man-made. Man -made. That's something you find in naturally. And choice D, situational type, that would be fear of heights, but something not natural. So fear of heights being on top of a roller coaster, okay? Next question. 
Which nursing statement to a client about social phobias versus schizoid personality disorder is most accurate? A, clients diagnosed with social phobia can manage anxiety without medication, whereas clients diagnosed with SPD can only manage anxiety with medications. B, clients diagnosed with SPD are distressed by the symptoms experienced in social settings, whereas clients diagnosed with social phobias are not. C, clients diagnosed with social phobia avoid interactions only in social settings, whereas clients with SPD avoid interactions in all areas of life. Or D, clients diagnosed with SPD avoid interactions only in social settings, whereas clients with diagnose whereas clients diagnosed with social phobias tend to avoid interactions in all areas of life. I just said a mouthful, so I'll give you guys a second to look at your choices and come up with what you think the answer is. Okay guys, so the correct answer is C. Clients diagnosed with social phobia avoid interactions only in social settings, whereas clients diagnosed with SPD, that's your schizoid personality disorder, avoid interactions in all areas of life. And that's very true. So the patient that has um, social phobias, that's their phobia, just being in social settings. So that's the only thing that they're going to avoid, right? Those social interactions. Uh, but... The patient with SPD schizoid, and that's the type of schizoid personality disorder, is not as extensive as the schizophrenic, but they still have those tendencies. They'll have the magical thinking. They like to be alone. They avoid all interactions. They are our loners. They don't have, um, you know, patient with social phobias. They may have a best friend. They may be close to family members. They may be close to uh, um, cousins. They may have a very close friendship and that's fine. But whenever they're placed in a social situation around a whole bunch of people, they have an extreme fear of doing something stupid or people laughing at them or doing something wrong or them not f fitting in. They have a very high intense fear of that social situation, but they can still have um, personal interactions with people but those patients with schizoid personality disorders they are loners you don't see them having any kind of personal communication they avoid it at all costs whether it's social in a group setting or just one-on-one -on -one. okay so that absolutely is your answer now let's look at the wrong choices you have choice a clients diagnosed with social phobia can manage anxiety without medications whereas clients with SPD can only manage anxiety with medications. And that's not true. For A, many clients with social phobia, they can manage without medication. They may need you know, therapy, but they don't have to have medication. So that's absolutely false. Not all of them need medications. Choice B, clients diagnosed with schizoid personality are distressed by the symptoms they experience. No, they're not. They're loners and they like it that way. OK, where you have those patients that have social phobias, they don't want to have those phobias. They don't want to have that extreme fear. They want to be able to socialize and be in group settings with others. The schizoid personality disorder, they're just fine being loners. OK, they prefer it that way. Okay. Um, choice D, clients with SPD avoid interactions only in social settings. No, they avoid interactions, period period. Okay. They avoid all forms of interaction. So that's wrong. So the correct answer is C. And this is absolutely true. The clients that are diagnosed with social phobia, avoid interactions only in social settings, but the clients with SPD, they avoid all interactions in every area aspect of their life. Okay. They're going to choose the type of jobs where they're working by themselves, such as security or, you know, maybe in the basement of a library organizing or filing things away. They don't like being around people. They don't like that um, interaction. Okay, guys, next question. What symptoms should a nurse use to differentiate a client diagnosed with panic disorder from a client diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, GAD? A, GAD is acute in nature and panic disorder is chronic. B, chest pain is a common GAD symptom, whereas 
This symptom is absent in panic disorders. C, hyperventilation is a common symptom in GAD and rare in panic disorder. Or D, depersonalization is commonly seen in panic disorder and absent in GAD. Okay, guys, so the correct answer is D, depersonalization is commonly seen in panic disorder and absent in GAD. All right, so what is depersonalization? This is a feeling where the patient actually detaches from their body, okay? So it's kind of like them having an out-of-body experience. Um, then absolutely, this is a, a, very often seen in panic disorder. Now let's look at the wrong answer choices. You have A, GAD is acute in nature, panic disorder is chronic, it's the opposite. Panic disorder, that's the one that's chronic. And GAD is the one that tends to be, panic disorder is the one that's acute, okay? That's the one that's happening right now. And GAD tends to be the one that's chronic. So A is false because the switch is the opposite. Then you have choice B, chest pain is common in GAD and um, whereas the symptoms absent is panic. Same thing, it's wrong. It's the other way around. You tend to see chest pain in the patient that's having an acute um, attack, which is a panic attack, okay? That's where you see the chest pain. That's where you see the diaphoresis. That's where you see the increased heart rate. That's where you see the increased breathing and the hyperventilation, all right, in the panic disorder, not the chronic disorder that the GAD tends to be. So that's incorrect. And then choice D, it says clients, where am I? Choice D, it says hyperventilation is common in GAD. No, it's common in the other one, which is panic disorder. We see that in panic disorder in the acute um, condition, not the chronic one. So the correct answer for this question is D, depersonalization. We often see this in panic disorder. When they're having a panic attack and they, they have that out-of-body experience, it feels like their body has detached. They have detached from themselves, okay? Next question. What treatment should a nurse identify as most appropriate for clients diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder? A, long-term treatment of diazepam Valium. B, acute symptom control with citalopram Celexa. C, long-term treatment with buspirone Abuspar. Or D, acute symptom control with Desperidone Gideon. And I'll give you guys a moment to think of your answer. I think I pronounced that medication. The last one, it's not Gideon. I think it's Geoden. But guys, if you've been watching my videos by now, you know I can't pronounce. So it's something. Geoden, Geodon. All right, guys, so the correct answer is C, long-term treatment with our abuse par, which is an anxiolytic, okay? That's gonna help do what? Decrease that anxiety. That is the correct answer. Now let's look at the wrong choices. We have A, long-term treatment of diazepam. Diazepam is a sedative. It's sometimes used as an anxiolytic, but even when it is used as an anxiolytic, not for that long term, okay? So that's not the best choice that we, best option that we would choose um, with these choices, okay? Choice B, um, Selexa, that's an SSRI. By the way, guys, don't forget SSRIs are our first line treatment medications for what? Depression. If you haven't watched my video on depression already, I have about two or three out there, actually. Make sure you watch all of them. Very good. Those are our number one go-to meds for depression. But we're not talking about depression. We're talking about anxiety. So that's wrong. Uh, choice D, acute symptom control with Geodon or Gideon. I can't pronounce it. But anyway, that medication, that's an antipsychotic. Who do we give antipsychotics to? We give them to the schizophrenics and the patients that go experience psychosis, which means they're out of touch with reality. And that's not the situation of the patient that we have. With the patient we have, we're dealing with anxiety. So our, our best choice here is the abuse part, which is an anxiolytic to decrease that patient's anxiety level. All right, next question. A client diagnosed with panic disorder states, when an attack happens, I feel like I'm going to die. 
Which is the most appropriate nursing response? A, I know it's frightening, but try to remind yourself that this will only last a short time. B, death from a panic attack happens so infrequently that there's no need to worry. C, most people who experience panic attacks have feelings of impending doom. D, tell me why you think you're going to die every time you have a panic attack. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. All right, guys, so the correct answer is A. I know it's frightening, but try to remind yourself that this will only last a short time. So there are two components to this answer. Number one, you're acknowledging their feeling. You're acknowledging that it's scary. It's something that's frightening. And then after that, you're actually helping them by telling them what to do. You're telling them to try to uh, remind themselves that it's only going to last for a short period of time. And that's very true. Panic attacks rarely ever last in a couple, more than a couple minutes, right? So you're acknowledging the patient's feelings. You're teaching the patient, which is a wonderful nursing intervention, right? And you're, what you're teaching them is um, self-coping, self-help method. And that's wonderful. That's absolutely the correct choice. Now let's look at our wrong answer choices. B, death from panic attack happens so infrequently that... Look at me in my eyeball when I tell you this. We do not ever tell patients not to worry. We don't do it. You don't tell patients not to worry. You don't reassure patients. You don't do that. We never say don't worry. We never, 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 never. We never say don't worry. And we never ask a patient why. And we never say what made you. Those are big no-nos. We do not do that. Am I clear? Okay, good. So that's wrong. Just with that ending, don't worry. You know that's wrong. We don't ever say that to patients. So we got that out the way. C, most people experience panic attacks, have feelings of impending doom. And that's true. They may have a feeling of impending doom. Absolutely. But the problem is it just ended there. You're not even going to teach a patient anything. You're not even going to help them. You're just going to tell them, oh, yeah, well, most patients that have your condition, they, they feel the same way. How does that help the patient? Where you have A, where you're acknowledging their feelings and you're also helping them by teaching them and telling them what to do, how to get through it. So that's wrong. And then choice D. Stop. Do we ever ask a patient why? No. Do we ever ask a patient what made you? No. Do we ever tell a patient don't worry? No. So we know that's wrong. So our only possible answer would be A. All right, next question. A nursing instructor is teaching about the medications used to, tr to treat panic disorder. Which student statement indicates that learning has occurred? A, clonazepam is particularly effective in the treatment of panic disorder. B, clozapine is used, is used off-label in long-term treatment of panic disorder. C, doxepin can be used in low doses to relieve symptoms of panic attacks. Or D, buspirone is used for its immediate effect to lower, excuse me, to lower anxiety during panic attacks. All right, guys. And the correct answer is A, clozapam. Cl clozapam, clonazepam. Clonazepam is particularly effective in the treatment of panic disorder, and it absolutely is. One thing you guys need to know about this drug, though, it's a benzo. And what do we know about benzos? They are addictive. They have the high risk for being addictive. They're, th this is a class of drugs that are abused very, very often. OK, so that that's why this is not something that we just give to the patient chronically every day because the risk of abuse is so high. But in a case such as this, when the patient's having a panic disorder, it can be given, but it's going to be given cautiously because of the high risk for abuse. And you definitely don't want to give a benzo to a patient who already has a histant a histance, a history of substance abuse. You know, maybe they were cocaine addict or alcoholic, or if they have a his any history of um, drug abuse or substance abuse that would even place them at higher risk 
of being addicted, okay? So we're going to be very careful with benzos, but benzos is very, very, very effective in panic disorders. All right, let's look at our other choices. B, clozapine. This is um, an antipsychotic. That's something you're going to give to a patient that's experiencing psychosis, such as your schizophrenic. Choice C, are doxepin, that's an antidepressant. And then choice D, well, you know your buspirone, that's an um, anxiolytic. So for this question, clonazepam is the answer. But like I said, remember, you're going to be um, giving this med cautiously and you're going to be watching them very closely because we don't want them to be addicted and to start to abuse this medication, okay? A family member has been seeking advice about an older parent who seems to worry unnecessarily about everything. The family member states, should I seek psychiatric help for my mother? What is an appropriate nursing response? A, my mother also worries unnecessarily. I think it's part of the aging process. B, anxiety is considered normal when it comes out of Excuse me, anxiety is considered abnormal when it's out of proportion to the stimulus causing it and it impairs functioning. C, from what you have told me, you should get her to a psychiatrist as soon as possible. Or D, anxiety is a complex phenomenon and is effectively treated only with psychotropic medications. And the correct answer, guys, is B. Look at this. It says anxiety is considered abnormal when, this is the first part, one, it's out of proportion with the stimulus that's causing it. But here's the second part. In addition to that, it impairs functioning. Okay? So not only is this person's fear irrational, it's stopping them from living their everyday life. It's stopping them from having a normal um, functioning pattern, okay? Those two have to be present. Now, let's look at our wrong answers. A, your mother, um, or your, excuse me, my mother also worries unnecessarily. That's something else that we don't do because that is not therapeutic. We're talking about the patient and their situation. Don't make it about you. Don't do that. Everything is always about the patient. So, um, that first choice is wrong, just starting off with mine. It's not about us, it's about the patient, so that's wrong. Choice C, from what you told me, you should get her to a psych... Oh, we're playing doctor now, are we? That's what we're doing? Because last time I checked, only the physician can give a referral to a specialist. So who are you to tell that patient to go to a psychiatrist? Who's gonna write that order? You can't. So absolutely not. As an RN, you cannot refer a patient to a specialist. The physician does that, so that's wrong. Um, next choice, I'm sorry guys, this writing is so small and I don't have my glasses on, so that's why I'm being weird on this video. Okay, and the last choice, anxiety is a complex phenomenon and is effectively treated only with psychotropic medications. <sighs> Test writers love doing this, where they'll give you a little bit of the truth, right? Part of the question, part of the answer choice will be right, and then the rest is wrong. Remember what I taught you guys. If the whole thing is not correct, it's wrong. Throw it out. So the first part is good. Anxiety is a complex phenomenon. That's true. And it's effectively treated only with psychotropic meds, that's absolutely false. I think in the first or second question, I already told you that that's not true because lots of patients can be treated with therapy, okay? And it doesn't have to be medication, it doesn't have to be psychotropic medication, so that's absolutely wrong. So the correct answer is B. By the way, before I even, I'm so annoyed with that answer choice. Um, besides telling the patient that they need to see a psychiatrist, besides you not being a doctor, you can't refer them to a specialist. You haven't assessed the patient. All you're doing is getting secondhand information. How are you going to tell them, tell the patient where to go? Does that make any sense, guys? Add pie. Assessment always comes before intervention. All right, moving on. A client is experiencing a severe panic attack. Which nursing intervention would meet this client's physiological need? A, teach a deep breathing exercise. B, placing them in Trent Dellenberg's position. C, having the client breathe into a paper bag. Or D, administer the as-ordered buspirone buspar.
and I hope you chose C, have the client breathe into a paper bag. And they gave us a hint in the question. It said, which would meet the client's physiological need? Physiological need. What physically keeps the patient alive? Airway breathing circulation, nutrition, fluid and electrolytes, um, glucose, uh, vital signs. Anything that physically keeps that patient alive, that's what physiological needs means, right? So here we are, we have a patient that's having a, a severe, a severe panic attack. They could have just said panic attack, but they put that word severe in front of it. By the way, guys, if you watch my priority and delegation video, remember I taught you, whenever you see that word severe, you're running to that patient. That patient's a priority, right? This patient's having a severe panic attack. What are we going to do to meet their physiological need? What are we going to do to keep that patient alive? What do we know about panic attacks? We know when a patient having a severe panic attack, they are out of touch with reality. They can't follow instructions. They can't even think. Their cognition has gone down, right? What do else do we know about them? They can start sweating. Heart rate goes up. What happens to their breathing? <laughs> They start hyperventilating and they start shooting off all of that CO2, which is acidic and can throw them into alkalinic state, right? They might pass out. So what do we do? We have them breathe into a paper bag, saw that <laughs> CO2 that they're getting rid of that they need, it goes back in. All right. That's going to help keep them alive because right now we're caring, we're caring about their physiological integrity. So that's the correct answer. You see A, you should have stopped where you saw teaching because I told you when a patient is in a panic, can they learn anything? Can they follow any type of directions? No, they cannot think. They are in a panic. They've lost all sense of logical sense or thought. So that's wrong. Choice B, put them in Trendelin's birth position. That's not going to do anything for the patient. Choice D, give them um, the as needed bispiron. You can do that after you get the breathing controlled by having them breathe into a paper bag, right? Because between giving them the abuse bar, which is going to take time to get through their system and controlling their breathing, what comes first? The breathing, airway, breathing, circulation. So obviously choice C is the correct answer. All right, guys, I am down to my last question. I thought, but I have a lot, lots more. So I guess I'm going to make uh, this a two-part video. Anyhow, I'm down to my last question because I'm almost out of time. Let's do this last question. A college student is unable to take a final exam due to severe test anxiety. Instead of studying, the student relieves stress by attending a movie. Which priority nursing diagnosis should a campus nurse assign for this client? A, non-compliance related to test taking. B, ineffective role performance related to helplessness. C, altered coping related to anxiety. Or D, powerlessness related to fear. And the correct answer, guys, is altered coping related to anxiety. So they have so much anxiety about this test. Instead of doing what they're supposed to do, actually study, they're going to the movies to just relieve their anxiety. So they need better coping strategies, right? You can't just avoid the problems, but the, the um, patient could have gotten some coping strategies. Talk to the professor, tell them about the testing anxiety, ask if they can test in a separate room by themselves, ask if they can have extra time to study, um, get the noise eliminating earphones when they're studying studying a quiet environment maybe play some very soft um music to um mellow them out but there's so many different things that the student can do besides avoiding the problem just going to the movies to forget about it so that's the answer altered coping related to their anxiety um they don't have healthy coping skills and the patient does need to uh, develop that. All right, guys, so I'm gonna make a part two to the video because I have plenty more questions and topics to cover in relation to anxiety. If you're currently studying psych right now, I have plenty of other um, psych videos, personality disorders, depression, you name it. Make sure you guys go ahead and watch it. Um, if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Press that red notification bell so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. If you have any classmates or study groups, guys, please 
Feel free to share my video and my content and I'll see you next time.